Hello, good morning, and welcome to Sunrise Daily. I'm Chamberlain. What's up? It's an absolutely beautiful Monday morning here in Lagos, Nigeria. You're welcome. I'm Kairi Okikiri. And I'm Ayo Makide. Good morning and welcome. You know, if you've been to the markets, which I believe, I mean, a lot of people have been going to, even men now go to the market a lot these days because some just want to go and confirm. Are you sure this is the price? <laughs> Are you sure this is really the price? I mean, that's on a lighter note. I mean, if, if you've if got you've time been, on your hands, you know. So you, you have to have time for some things these days. Absolutely, well, you just have to have time. <sighs> so, I mean, we took a trip to the market. We do that from time to time, essentially, uh, just to balance some of these figures we see. So you see that uh, the inflation is what 16.6 percent has dropped, but you know that the prices of food item, especially, uh, I mean, the consumables, the ones that we're used to. They don't seem to be going down. And so we paid a visit to the markets yet again. And we just went a step further by paying a visit to Nigerians just to understand how they're grappling with the effect of rising cost of food items. I recall it was at the period of COVID-19 we had started talking about this. And we thought, OK, maybe because it was as a result of the lockdowns, uh, the fact that food production had dropped a lot. And I, and I recall that the government actually gave waivers to farmers to be able to go to farms and farm essentially, so have food. But then the pandemic, at least the lockdowns ended and the food prices kept going up and up and up. So we're at the point now that a lot of Nigerians are going for food because it's cheaper, not necessarily because it has quality. So, I mean, they talk about balanced diet or what nutritional diet now is, is, not, is not the important thing. It's just to get something in your stomach. And I recall the president in the Independence Day speech talking about the fact that some people hoard you know, food, and that's, that's essentially perhaps why we're seeing a rise in food, food prices uh, and all that. But clearly, uh, uh, the question is what is being done about that? It seems we have identified the problem, but some will tell you it's way beyond that the truth is for a lot of nigerians right now the choices the choices are really few they have to go for food because it's cheap not necessarily because it has value and that's who is even thinking about those things you know about um, hoarding food yeah? yeah no no who is thinking about nutrition there is this there's a who is only nutritionists are thinking about that mostly. Nah, I, I mean, let's, I, I, let's come, come on, on. I don't think guys. So. Let's okay, no, okay, okay. Let me give you an example. Many people, let me give you yeah. an example. There is an African proverb that says, "If you remove hunger from poverty, poverty is done." Now, is that proverb my full of economics? <laughs> so, one of the things that many people just want to eat, not and you know, with the growing. Uh, poverty figures, unemployment figures, and all those things, it, it, it's going to take quite a while before people really begin, and at least a sizable number of the population, really think about these things. And look, I, whether, whichever way we look at it, yes, you are right, Chamberlain. A number of people, a very good number of people are thinking about it. But really, increasingly people, so as well. Increasingly so, should, especially because of that. this time, because you know how you have to chunk up based on um, nutritional value and all those things. But in the rural areas, really, who is? I mean, let's think about it. Maybe historically people just have a way of eating healthy because they just go straight to the farm, pick up whatever it is, they eat live, you know, the vegetables straight from the farm to the table and all those things. They are closer to the farm, so it's closer, the farm is closer to their table. But in urban Nigeria, not so much. I mean, go to any of these big markets or even small markets. People still use the small, the, the, the roughages of, of all of these foods. It's unfair. But it is the reality of some people. And indeed, just as the president said, there are those who still hot food. And then there are those who, the, the farmers have a tough time on their hands. There is no storage in the farms. And the roads, for many of them, aren't as good enough for them to quickly transport food from the farm to the table of Nigerians. The elephant in the room, which is security. Based of, that's another matter altogether. So... The issues are there. Um, I, I'm wondering, well, one would say, that, of course, the Federal Ministry of Agriculture, the State Ministries of Agriculture, they are doing everything that they can, but then the reality is people are still grappling with these things. Well, <laughs> they will always, look, we've always grappled with these things for decades. Should we? It's not new that we're Should grappling with that. Mm. And then, so when you add that hoarding component to it, I don't know how that fits because... Why do people hoard things if it's not available? If it's that 
if it's so much out there, what would you be holding it for? Mm. I don't even know how um, that plays out because remember there was a ministerial committee that was set up some years ago to look at why is it that the prices of foodstuff are just hitting the roof. I know that uh, they have a lot of facts and figures or details, you know, data, hopefully, uh, credible ones <laughs> my ad, with which they can plan. Uh, well, when you say people are much more interested in just putting in what they write on quality, and that reminds me of uh, that recent decision by the federal government wherein they approved the cultivation of teller maize, that's genetically modified maize in the All country, right. which uh, I think the, the research from uh, Amadou Bello University mm. in, in Zaria, so uh, they give them that IARR certificate. So uh, the National Biosafety Agency, I don't know how many people remember that, they are the ones who are saddled with that responsibility to ensure that uh, they look through uh, GMO foods across the country. So it's of equal importance for a while there's a huge uh, data, huge gap in terms of those, the amount of food that we produce in the country and then the amount of those who require that food. So we've not been able to bridge that gap yet. We have a lot, a lot of grounds in terms of, literally speaking, to uh, land for farming. We put so much in the agri sector. So that is another component which the country has got to pay a lot of attention to. And uh, when you see our capacity, I mean, we're yeah. able to feed uh, how many? 600 million? We're 200 million and we were grappling with that. I mean, you've referenced this problem. And, you know, I chuckled earlier because I recalled a statement credited to the now former Minister of Agriculture about, you know, having, what, is it 50 naira or with 100 naira you can, you can get a good meal? And you wonder, <laughs> where in the world was he living? So maybe, I'm thinking maybe, maybe, he said that. maybe we should get the address of that place. There are some things that would, one would think, okay, these things, uh, you know, it's a no-brainer, but... Sincerely, if you look at it, these issues are really, really serious. Mm -hmm. Guys, we can sit here. One of the issues that the president has been told by his Economic Advisory Council is that, look, we are not even using up to 20% of our arable land for agriculture. And you reference the issue of agriculture, uh, of, of security. That's, it's not an elephant in the room. It's right there in our faces. It's, it's an issue that everyone is thinking about and talking about. How we are addressing it, that's another thing altogether. And don't also forget that Poverty looms, mm. hunger looms, if we do yeah. not address the issues that are making these things happen. It's not that we do not know. Look, uh, you, you talked about the fact that we have some data. Yes, we have data scattered all over, all over the place. And the federal, federal government has been talking about harmonizing all of these data one of these days so that we can know what to do with the people that we, we, we're supposed to take care of. If indeed the constitution says, and the federal government will leave to it, as well as, well as the state government, that the, the welfare and security of people shall be the primary purpose of government. Welfare here, I would expect, would, would also consider not just being healthy, but eating healthy in order to stay healthy. Otherwise, how do we increase or make our human capital stronger for the economy? Well, 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 I hope that uh, when the security challenges are addressed, you know, farmers that have always been complaining about not able to get to the lands can make do. I mean, since we have that s such huge constraint about the land space, so how much more of this? Well, we'll be back and take a look at some of the dailies for you in a moment. Welcome back. Let's I'll take you through some of the dailies. We're going to start with Nigerian Tribune today, and they're not far removed from what transpired over the weekend concerning some of the party congresses that was held. Yeah, we're waiting for that to pop up, actually. Okay, well, uh, we'll hold on for that until that comes up. So, there you go. That's the Tribune right there. Masterminds of parallel APC Congresses in trouble. Uh, as party secretary says, parallel Congress not in consonance with party constitution. Any Congress held outside one supervised by national officers in Oshobo, a charade. Uh, that's a scrap to Elegbelaya. And then you see, don't impose leaders on us. Bochi APC warns old faction threatens legal action 
in Lagos. I beg your pardon. OK Faction threatens legal action in Lagos. So that, that's all. Uh, those are the writers associated with that uh, lead story you find on the front page there. Well, I don't know how you may respond or internalize this piece of information. Fuel subsidy hits 816 billion naira in seven months. Now uh, you can just blow your cheeks out and just wonder what in the world is going on with this. So um, they keep we keep asking how long, what's the fact, what's what's going on with this. But that's the latest information you have about that. And then Sarah sues Bari wants court to declare plan to monitor WhatsApp messages illegal. So there you go. Uh, there are several other platforms now, so all this, you might just find people. You already, you already migrated at that time, the WhatsApp was down, so they, they're flexing their muscles for those other social messaging platforms. But now that this piece of information is out there, you just wonder. That's Tribune. Quite an interesting one there. I'll take a look at Vanguard newspaper with this one as well, still on the Congresses. APC PDP crippled by crisis. And you see with the E, it's not just one crisis, there's a lot. And the writers can just paint that picture for you because it's a lot. In fact, looking at the writers, you think is like the first paragraph of a story itself. Don't bring party down with selfish interest, APC warns members. We'll resolve issues arising from state congresses before national convention. That's coming from the PDP. Confusion as APC gets three state excos. <laughs> can you beat that? In Akwaibom, you see Akpabio. Apano Doide, Enang fight dirty. Southwest PDP crisis deepens. PDP scribe Obi Udenwa Ehedio a kick against imposition of Ayau. That's for PDP scribe, that is. Harbour Abia APC chairman extends olive branch to aggrieved members. Any Congress not conducted by APC national officials, Jamboree, Elegbele, another reports quoted the, the state governor of Lagos saying it's just a naming ceremony right so you know while you can you know right so so what we can I mean <laughs> exactly so what we can smile at all those things you you look at the real process the real issues I wonder there's clearly nothing to smile about the philosophy it's just um, philosophy of congresses unfortunately Unfortunately so, I mean, because otherwise, why would there be so much rockers in all of the, all of the political parties? You know, mm. some people are not just happy that, look, you are, uh, what's the word now? Forcing candidates on us. Oh. Who are the we? Well, but the are, they just go to celebrate. Yeah, but the father and always, the, the, you the know father what, already had the name. Food. The father already had the name. The father, you know, well, sometimes the mother doesn't. Clearly, this is a lot. I mean, there are a lot of issues coming from this one. Wow. It's on page five of the Vanguard, but guess what? We're delving into all of that for you. I mean, democracy within parties is very important, internal party democracy. Because if we don't get it right at that level, yeah. what are you going to present to Nigerians Absolutely. on the national level? Most people, That's where the challenge comes from. Most people are not going to go to the polls. Um, people don't want to join political parties for fear that, look, um, I'm ne my voice is never going to be heard. Um, well, they need to banish that fear and give it a shot. Nothing ventures, nothing wins. Mm -hmm. so, so you hear that? It's very important. From Chamberlain, give it a shot. Yeah. Well, yeah, they, 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 they should. Why yeah. not? Uh, I think you should participate Everybody one can't way stay or the away. other. Yes. Everybody can stay. Absolutely. Away. Well, it's a, it's a full page for you on the front page of the Vanguard, and I think it's futile just trying to take all of them. So let me just speak one more or two. Anambra is not emo. Saludo. We may tell Rigas. So you wonder what happened in Emo. We're still on the Vanguard, by the way. So you wonder what happened in Emo. Why make that reference? So maybe you might want Shots to refresh. Fired right there. Oh yes. <laughs> no, I want to refresh your memory on that one. Ouch. Yeah. Uh, there is Mr. and Mrs. for you. Uh, and Mrs. saying, dear, I just passed by the house down the road. It's up for rent. And Mr. says, oh, the one close to the building where university girls stay. I'll check if it's for sale. 
<laughs> Miss Stott. <laughs> well, Backpage has sports stories for you. Uh, many rivers to cross for United. Uh, word play there. CAF Champions League, you know, Rivers United and Al Alilal playing 1-1 at home yesterday. Uh, and far away, Madrid, the governor of uh, Rivers was, you know, signing the dotted lines with Real Madrid. So perhaps this might also influence football, grassroots football in River State. That's the vanguard for you. Nigerian News Direct is also interested in the Congresses, but of APC to be precise. APC Congress, Amosun, Arabe Shola, others risk suspension over parallel party congress stories on page two the skeptical committee describes parallel arrangements as futile unconstitutional find all of that story right there right above the nameplate 4.8 billion naira to monitor whatsapp Serap what? files lawsuit against buhari 3.8 billion naira yep i was talking about food crisis um, this, this is about WhatsApp, actually. Not about food crisis. Uh -uh. How to, you know, ensure that we don't have any more... Well, there's something related to money there. On the, on the WhatsApp, that's related to money. Five point something billion, isn't it? Well, that's what um, is on the front page of the Nigerian News. Right? Maybe it's um, uh, exaggerated. You want to find the details on the inside. Right beside that one, NCC tasks licensees on compliance with telecoms reg regulations and license conditions find the story on page three right under the picture there apcon tackle cbn on naira depreciation months after fx supply suspension seems this issue is not going anywhere anytime soon that's the nigerian news direct today well take a look at uh, the guardian ghosts of nsas hunt fg's policies on power petrol subsidies lcci estimates losses at about 700 billion naira economists say over 1 trillion naira lost to mayhem insurers settled 5.4 billion naira and sas claims private sector government yet to recover from nsas says ex lcci boss so the damage is uh, i guess ran deep I see why. Uh, you also see Anglican bishops back south governors warn open grazing will cause food shortage. Here we are talking about World Food Day and the challenge we face. And then you have this making the rounds as well. Ex servicemen experts urge police to enforce anti open grazing law. We're not violent herders, killers. Uh, Hold on, I'll go again. We're not violent headers, killers, Fulani Christians cry out. Yep, so that's the thing about, you know, uh, this ethnic profiling. Uh, you just tend to paint everybody with one brush, which so many people these days, or maybe I should just say unconsciously do, you know, or by default, you know, stereotyping, this kind of thing. So. That's what it comes down to. And uh, yeah, you will always have a lot of other stories. That's the Guardian today. Well, recall the Oronsoy report and um, I mean, that time that the president spoke about it, or at least the presidency spoke about it and got a lot of people rejoicing. Well, Daily Trust is following up on that one. And you see, 18 months after Buhari's directive, Oronsoy report still stuck. The writer says how lobbyists killed the implementation under Jonathan that's now in court who's saying that report outdated dead head of service oh, take a look at what the finance minister is saying says we're on course so you wonder perhaps maybe contextualize those statements and when you do then make inferences well that's the lead for the daily trust this morning the orosoya report that that's that's what meant to essentially uh, clean up the civil service. I'm sure that the scraps of ministries that were not supposed to be, Merge and then some. there were police reforms. There were just so many. But we're good at reports, and the reports. Excellent ones at that. Gather dust wherever they are. So that's why sometimes you just wonder if anyone is going to sit in the office, pick up any of this report and implement it. You look like a superstar. It's not that hard, is it? No. Well, at uh, least not, not hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> Under the big picture, you see, shock as suspended Kano black market judge bounces back.
So you wonder what that's about. In fact, that story is in black, essentially, perhaps trying to, you know, send that message home to more. That's the Daily Trust newspaper. The Abuja Enquirer is talking about road crashes. Abuja ranks second nationwide. That's what you have right there. Accounts for 8.4% of accidents. That's um, the ascribed to the FRSC this morning. That's what you have right there. And FCT evacuates 200 truckload of waste from Nyanya Kefi Road weekly. 200 truckload of waste. So that's what you have right there. So many others. Enters Benway panel recommends 304.5 million naira compensation for victims, and on and on. So many other issues uh, to choose and pick from. New Telegraph. Okay, well, there you go. Senate uncovers 28 billion naira paid to unnamed MDAs by budget office. Uh, I thought yours truly was, I mean, I thought somebody was going to mention the famous report again. Uh, but you see, beneficiaries of excess payment unknown to us, BOF. Unknown MDAs or unknown beneficiaries. Oh, God. What a country. What a scenario. You know, you see that. Uh, and then you see this at the bottom strip as well. Uh, Southeast Insecurity, How to End IPOB's Stay at Home Order by Mbaka. I know that uh, I think they were denying some reports, making it around saying, nope, no, nope, we didn't do it, but they need to see how they can address and put an end to that. Well, leadership, leadership leads with uh, something on Abuja, saying Abuja now home to abandoned white elephant projects. It's page four reads, say billions of naira disbursed to contractors, but projects rot away. Oh. Government makes excuses for delays, abandonment, and see this one from residents saying it's a national shame. And I mean, if you've been to the nation's capital, you'll see that much and perhaps even more. There's a couple of other stories, the party, politics, the Congress, and you see budget office paid 28 billion naira to unnamed MDAs, as according to the Senate. See, the, the, the abandoned project properties things that you, projects thing that you talked about is just one. Uh, remember, it was the Jonathan government and even this current government have taken audits of abandoned projects, federal government abandoned projects all over the nation, up to 12,000 of them. And you're wondering, that's money rotting away. Hmm. Well, that is it with a look at some of the dailies here this morning. We will be back in a moment. Do stay with us. As a build-up to the next general elections, the ruling All Progressives Congress across the country is organizing state congresses to elect new executives. In Cross River State, Mr. Alphonsus Eber emerges as the state party chairman through a consensus voice vote by party delegates at the UJ Swene Stadium in Calabar, the state capital. Ben Ayade expresses satisfaction over the peaceful conduct of the Congress. He believes that this will ensure that Cross River fully becomes an APC state. Today we have a party, a party that is not just prepared to continue to sustain power in Cross River State, but actually join hands with our other states to ensure that Nigeria remains an APC country. <laughs> The Delta State delegates from across all the local government areas via a voice vote elected Omeni Sobotier as the chairman of the state chapter of the APC. The Deputy Senate President, Senator Ovio Mwagege, who was part of the exercise, calls for unity among members. We're looking forward to reconciliation. Our doors are open uh, uh, until we're able to achieve that unity. We want to continue to stress on those things that bring us together as opposed to those things that divide us. 
Oshobo, the Oshun State Capitol, witnesses parallel congresses as the group loyal to the state governor, Boyega Yatola, gather at the Oshobo City Stadium, where the incumbent party chairman, Prince Boyega Famudung, emerges victorious via voice votes. What all of us are praying for at the National Convention, like God has given us today, God will give, give us the convention. Governor Yutona challenges the new party executive to ensure a reconciliatory process that will guarantee unity. Every delegate must cast his or her votes according to his or her wish. There must be no rancor, it's a party affair. It's an opportunity to select those that will run the affairs of the uh, party for the next one year. Meanwhile, the group loyal to the former governor of the state and minister of interior, Ralph Arakbeshala gather at the Oshobo Bogon Road with Abdul Razak Salisile emerging as the factional chairman of the APC in the state. Two of our delegates were injured. We were very lucky because we had uh, concluded our programs and uh, every necessary step had been taken, necessary things concluded. For ourselves, the future of the place. The Baronu State chapter of the All Progressives Congress, through a consensus, adopts its own executive led by Ali Dalori to continue leading the party for another term of four years. We can see here for ourselves the future of the place. The Congress, which held at the Ramat Square, may degree, has in attendance the state governor of Abagana Zulum, his predecessor, Kashim Shatima, amongst other party stakeholders. I will assure you, we will not claim you and your members, and we will not claim. The APC Congress in Kano State held at the Sunny Abacha Indoor Stadium where Governor Omar Ganduje and over 3,000 delegates from the 44 local government areas were in attendance. The state party chairman, Abdullahi Abbas, was returned as chairman via a consensus. The governor who describes the process as peaceful says stakeholders should disregard any other Congress in the state. Any other location where the pockets of disgruntled elements performing a similar function is regarded as illegal. Meanwhile, the parallel faction of the APC in Kano, led by Senator Ibrahim Shekarao and Tijani Jobe, conducted another state congress at Janguza in Tofa local government area, where Amadou Zago emerged parallel chairman. I thank all of you, and I will assure you that being a chairman in Kano State APC, I will not, tell you, I will not let the party to pale down. After these state congresses, the attention of the party now shifts to the national convention. Many would be watching, however, how the party is able to resolve the emergence of parallel congresses in several states. All right, welcome back. Well, those are some of the issues that we will be highlighting this morning, uh, the APC's parallel congresses in different parts of the country. We've got two gentlemen joining us to weigh in on that matter. We've got uh, Ahmad Sajo, who is a former commissioner, for information in Adamawa State, joins us from our studios in Abuja. And then uh, Mr. Ben Moye himself is a former chairman of Enugu State APC and was the secretary of oh, okay. uh, APC Chairman's Forum. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us on the program today. Good morning, Kim. Good morning, Good my morning. dear brother. Right. Mr. Moye, let me start with you. Uh, Enugu had its fair share of this controversy as a matter of fact. Much as we know that some have uh, been quoted to have described what was going to happen or happened as just a naming ceremony. But give us your perspective and, of how it played out in your state. I think what, what happened in my state and happened in many other states is that um, the, those sent to Enugu State to conduct a conference uh, refused to follow the rules. They hid themselves in a hotel. They made themselves unavailable. And they decided to go to an unknown location. While the Congress was going on at the state, at the state uh, party secretariat, where I was designated for the Congress, then those that were sent, some that were sent to come to him, went around 
to private uh, premises and conducted what he called a Congress. And unfortunately, that was masterminded by a member of the National Kiatika and Convention Planning Committee. And then, so when we hear the statement that people will be punished, and it brings me to legality of punishment and uh, uh, the, 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 the justice and everything involved in it. Those who are perhaps vested with authority to administer the, the Congress processes have been accused in many states, Enugu too, to being directly involved in um, state managing illegality that they call Congress. And so people will obviously engage in self help. And, and then the real people follow the process as stipulated by our guideline and our constitution. The real Congress is that it's bottom up, allow leaders, allow the elect to elect their leaders, allow people from the bottom up. So people troop in and elected their leaders. And so while those of them went to, to the hotel room and started writing people's name, you know, we, we, we wouldn't allow that. And so people resisted it. The same thing occurred in many places. So if those who are appointed to serve at the National Con Convention, National Kiatika and uh, Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee, they decide to go there and allow some highly influential individual to hijack the process, you know, we, no one will leave the party for them. They'll be resisted. And so when we talk about that, is a, that certain Congress is a naming process, is a naming uh, ceremony, it undermines the union of grassroots members. Such statement undermines the feeling of the real voters. So people who will vote, and then they show up to vote, delegate, real delegate, and they are shut out from the process. What do you expect them to do? And then you will start talking about, you will sit in judgment and sack people or punish people, mm. fine. But it will be done within the confines of the Constitution. It will be done within the confines of the rules of engagement, not when we put up a rule and we don't follow our own rule. Right mm. now, for example, but, this time. Yeah, but, but Dr. Oye, when you looking at uh, how uh, the, the whole thing played out, you, the caliber of people that were involved in that other Congress raises, you know, you would have thought, but these are senior members of the party in the state, and you expect that, well, if anyone should know the laws and how to comply, it should be them. So one wonders, are they in the wrong? Especially when you get to see or uh, read that, uh, the reports that uh, the Congress committee chair preside, supervise that Congress. So that leaves you wondering. Because now, okay. Enigo, we understand, have got two chairmen emerged in the state. That is correct. You see, it, it is not about who, that's exactly the point I'm making. The party is not about big men and big women. It is not about the former this and former that. Some people are using their status in the society to destroy our democratic process. When the rules of engagement was laid down, the guideline came out. We expected the party to follow the guideline. They will have to call names. For example, the most distinguished Senator Ken in Amani, for example, okay, the former Senate president who will be launching his book on democracy in a few days' time, unfortunately, encouraged the destruction of democracy in any new state. And this is a fact. We recorded it. When you have starting from what Congress, when Congresses are being conducted at the field and after the Congress, and they go into a hotel room or a Southeast uh, Secretariat and decide to write names of those who didn't win. And we have the videos of the winners. For example, AK Wall, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, was involved in destroying democratic process. Do we just well, take away from them because, let, let me tell you, know, you someone was elected in AK Wall and they removed the person's name. AK Ward is the same ward where you have Osito Kechuku, the DG Vaughn. Someone scored over 600 votes, and then the next thing they did, they elected somebody that scored just one vote because that is the minister's candidate. We can't allow that to happen. This is democracy that we're building. This is a decent democracy. So when, when you say the former this or the big names, we give too much credit. You ask, where are the followers? 
We have videos, we have pictorial evidence, we have voice evidence. And so when they hijack the process, what do you expect the ordinary voter, the ordinary member to do when we say it is bottom-up approach? You know, Dr. Oye, yes, we want to put out the facts and information out there, but, you know, it's always a borderline between uh, attacking those personalities and then perhaps defaming their character. And since you don't have them here to, to speak for themselves, I think it's only fair that we just uh, find a way to just speak to those issues and not... Uh, seem to be crossing that borderline of defaming their character whilst making or putting the facts out there, which we always like you to do. But having laid down those foundations, uh, made your point about what happened in the state, we know that, yes, in some other states, a uh, similar matter. In fact, some states had three chairmen, and some states could not hold their congresses. So let me take it on to uh, uh, Mr. Saggio to weigh in on this one, uh, also looking at what transpired in, in Admiral State as well. We also saw that of Kano, wherein uh, uh, Senator Chakarao also had a group that had another meeting right there. So, Mr. Saggio, looking at the way these things are playing out, it, this not, well, maybe onlookers didn't see this happening, but these are not good signs for the party. Yeah, uh, my dear brother, I, I, I think let me start by telling you that um, we put in apples, mangoes, oranges, and grapes in one basket, and I'm trying to call them by one name. Let me try and unbundle the basket a little and identify the items separately. Four categories of uh, happenings, uh, you know, uh, can be identified. First, there were states that were in the majority, definitely, where the process went on seamlessly and there was no problem. Uh, we have to acknowledge that. Then there were states where the process did not even take place at all uh, for some reasons. And then there were states where some attention seekers decided to, to hold some little jamboree or side uh, meetings and call them parallel congress just to draw attention to themselves. But there are also states where genuinely, you know, there, there, are, there are concerns. So looking at these four different scenarios, I, I, I think we must, uh, you know, in fairness to, to the system, we must commend the Mai Malabuni-led uh, Ketika Committee for the successes recorded in the states where the process went on seamlessly. We must also commend uh, the, the, the committee for, 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 for opening up uh, the space, making the party very attractive, that it attracted very many uh, people, including very highly placed key stakeholders, which could be the reason why you know, some of these things are happening. If uh, the space was not opened, if some strong godfathers had controlled the party and said everybody should sit down in one particular room and write names and that there will be no process, we wouldn't even have the opportunity for people to, to go somewhere else and hold uh, whatever they called uh, the parallel. But I must tell you that definitely, you know, a political party is a legal entity. It operates with laws, it operates with rules, it operates with guidelines and procedures. The, the committee, I'm sure, will look at all the, 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 the happenings and weigh them within the context of their legality within the context of uh, abuse of procedure or abuse of rules of uh, engagement or, or guidelines and, 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 and treat every case on its own merit. I am very sure that uh, if they probe further, there may be some areas where some of the officials who were supposed to pretend over the issues, you know, compromised here and there. And I think that's where the committee should come and show Nigerians that, yeah, they have the capacity to dispense justice where injustice is glaringly, I mean, had glaringly occurred. But otherwise, I, I think uh, there are quite a number of states where the process went on very well and very seamlessly. You are talking about my state of Adamawa. They spent 48 hours inside Lamido Cinema. And there was, there was an election, a real voting, and then the counting. And, and, and whatever you want to say, the process was carried out to the letter of uh, the guidelines. And there are many other states where it happened that way. And even in your own report, majority of the places you reported, the, the process was seamless and was, was okay. 
But there are places like uh, you said, or like my brother said uh, from Inugu, that there are places where there, were, there are genuine concerns. Those concerns will be addressed, I am sure, and should be addressed as a matter of fact. But um, let us give the thing some measure of credit because, you know, the, the, the democracy is not about agreeing all the times. It's about, you know, putting on different points of view and advancing those points yeah, but, of view. But, but, but Mr. Sanjo, those points of view. Um, and I think to that extent it's been done. You know, the, the scenario, for instance, in Enugu, where you just heard the, the uh, categories, the caliber of people that were said to have been involved in the other Congress, uh, the laws are there for the party. It's spelled out. So it's not just something you wake up and stumble into or happens to you. You know that there are rules that have to be followed. So how would you characterize it when uh, Mr. Wei said this is brazen disregard to the law and that is tantamount to plunging the party into the deep end? No, I, I, I think in, le in legal matters, we, we, we ought to be very careful. Uh, and and I, I commend you for being also very professional when, when you, 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 you cautioned about calling names and, and, and laying blames on the doorsteps of individuals. What I, am, what, what I want to advise is that uh, both the party members, stakeholders and ordinary members, and the, the leadership of, of the party itself must, must trade this uh, situation with a lot of caution. We have to be very cautious. We have to investigate. We have to find out. If you say a committee had gone to organize a process, who are the members of the committee? What is the legal basis of them going to that place to organize that committee? What, 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 was the, 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 what are the rules? Were the rules breached? Were they followed to the letter? And I, I, I think this is not a process that we can sit down on, on, the, the, on, the, on before cameras and begin to say A has committed an offense, or B has planted uh, the rules. I, I think the committee, the Ketika committee, led by uh, His Excellency Governor Mai Mala Buni, will look at it dispassionately, will look at it uh, very carefully, and I advise that they should look at it, you know, uh, with fairness and equity, and see where rules or laws or procedures have been breached. Where mm. they are breached, I, I think steps will be taken to correct the breach. But where they are not breached, or where at least just somebody wakes up in the morning, like I told you, there, there are people who are simply attention seekers. States where the whole process was very peaceful, they went there and hired some few, few, few people, rented a crowd, and organized what they called a parallel congress. There was, there was no, no law, no, no procedure, no letter, no member of the National uh, com 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 Committee was at the, at the place. Place. Mr. Sanjo, do you have an example of a state such where that such a thing happened? Into disputes that you Mr. Sanjo, just one second. Or you, or you, or just just give, a second, Mr. Sanjo. Uh, you, you, do you have an example of a state to, where a such a thing happened, what you just described now? Some people uh, had a, a, a group, a, a crowd to go conduct this. Do you have an example of such a state? No, in many of the states where you have... Uh, the, the so-called parallel congress. Some of these parallel congresses were not parallel congresses in the real sense of it. And, and uh, like my brother cautioned, uh, we wouldn't want to create a problem for, for the reconciliation process by beginning to either name states or individuals or groups. Okay. I right. am saying that it's not in all cases where you have uh, the so-called parallel Congress All right. that are okay. actually parallel Congress. All right, Mr. Ka Mr. Sajo, uh, I would expect that you also would want to put a, a note somewhere across to the uh, Chiaritaka Committee, at least, who name the states without naming the names. But uh, let me take this to Mr. Nwoye. Did you see this coming in Enugu State? Uh, because one would have expected that Given that these things, you know, happen at the level at which they happened, one would wonder whether or not the concerns of various elements within the party were put into consideration before the Congresses. Otherwise, this kind of thing wouldn't have happened, don't you think? 
I agree with you. Um, first of all, let me congratulate uh, my brother, Mr. Chaiju, from, uh, from Adama. My friend was returned. They had a wonderful, from what I saw on TV, they had a wonderful uh, Congress there. Uh, here in Enugu, at one point we had issues, and then we resolved those issues. Everybody came back together and agreed to work together. And everyone, on July 31st, the entire big weeks in Enugu State was at the state's party secretariat. And we all agreed everybody should go to their ward and conduct Congress. Without naming names, but just name it, all the who is who, serving and former this and former that. They were all there and they agreed. So nobody saw it happening. Unbeknown to us, they had hijacked the process. Nobody knew that we go into uh, Southeast Secretariat and start imputing names of those who didn't participate. And so when leaders, the real leaders of the party, at the grassroots, that's the way our party is formed. They are the base. But those on the top who are thinking of 2023, this whole thing is about 2023. They want to hijack the process for their own, for their own individual motive. They decided to write result. And then think about this. After we are complain, complaints were laid out to a committee when we talk about uh, there's law, there's this, there's that. Are we following our own law? Complaints were made out from the 260 words and sent out to the panel that came to look over what the, the, the Congress committee did, the appeal panel. And guess what? The appeal panel, again, simply did not sit anywhere in Enugu State. Complaint was handed back over to the National Secretariat, to the Office of the Secretary, that these people did not sit in Enugu. They showed up in Enugu and then they wrote a report. That report was adopted by the, the National Chiatica and Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee. They adopted it despite the complaint that this is step-by-step -step approach. We complained about the individual, without naming them, the chairman of the panel that came to Enugu. Even after we complained that this man has compromised they still send the same person to conduct the, the uh, local, government, local government congress. He repeated exactly the same thing. He wrote the result inside his hotel room with a company of those who sponsored him. Okay, it was again, they send the same panel, the same appeal panel that had refused to have any hearing anywhere in Enugu State. They send them to Enugu State. Once again, overwhelmingly from the 17 local government, complaint was placed on their lap. They refused to sit. They refused to sit and went back to Abuja, presented it to the National Chiatica Committee. They once again approved the result of a doctored document. Okay? We still complain about this man who is certainly working for somebody as, and who is masquerading as a chairman of, of the of the co Congress committee, they still brought the same man back in. Well, Mr. So Moye, this, all this time. so yes, clearly, uh, I mean, from what you say, it was expected anyway that this will go uh, the way it has gone. But when Mr. Sajo essentially said the national leadership of the party has done well, and he referenced a lot of states, but you, from what you say, it seems as though the team sent from the national you know, leadership is always the one where you have issues. You've referenced the Congress, you've referenced the appeal and the rest. So in that light, would you still also commend the national leadership for the way the, the, the Congress has been conducted. I'm talking from the LG to the, the, um, to the ward and now the State Congress. You see, these things are specific. They are issue specific. Of course, as a leader of the party in my own capacity, I commend them on the states where they have had a very, very each free Congress. But I have to dwell on my state. Politics is local. They may have done well in Anambra, sorry, in uh, Adamawa State. But I can't comment issue on Adamawa State. I am not in Adamawa. I was the chairman of Enugu State APC until the last Congress, until Congress that was just concluded. So I'm speaking about Enugu State. The man they sent 
The same man did the World Congress, and we did complain. The same man did the local government congress. We did complain. The same man did now came back and did the, the uh, state congress. And of course, you saw the result of it. So they may have, I don't know what, what the issue is. I don't know if they're afraid of some big win. I don't know if somebody has taken control of the process. What I know is that injustice has been done in the state, especially when we complain and they refuse to listen to the complaint. You know, mother justice is blind. But in this case, we see that mother justice that is guiding over Enugu State APC has decided to be not blind, has unveiled her, her, blind, her, her blindfold. And they are looking at people who are involved, even when they are the wrong. And I'm saying this thing, we have videos, we have cameras, we have pictorial evidence of this conduct these illegalities, we have documentation. Our constitution permits us to exhaust all the internal dispute resolution mechanisms. And the all people right. involved that I'm speaking on their behalf have done so. Okay, so that means you, you clearly do have uh, some materials to present to either the Reconciliation Committee or the national leadership to address some of these matters. But we'll shed a lot more, we'll talk a little bit more on some of these matters and its implications possibly when we return from this break in a moment. Don't go away. Welcome back, Mr. Sajo. Having listened to what Dr. Ben Moye has said concerning the consistency with which uh, those persons who descend from the national office to conduct different congresses did that with reckless abandon, he raises questions as to the intendment of some of those actions, especially when he said it occurred not once, not twice. So, can anyone explain these kind of things away? Experiences are different, and 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 I'm not talking particularly about my state. I I came here to speak on the conduct of the state congresses nationwide, and 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 and, and I've been monitoring the conduct nationwide. But I want to I want to also appreciate and understand <clears throat> the, the feelings of my dear brother. Uh, if, he has, uh, if he has all the evidence he said he has and he has not been listened to, I'd, 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 I think there is a case there that should be listened to by the National Caretaker Committee. But I have a different experience. You know, I led uh, a team from my own local government to go and uh, to go to the, the appeal committee after the first set of local government congresses and none was held in my local government. I marshaled all my evidences and went and presented them before the chairman of uh, the appeal panel. And uh, the National Caretaker Committee agreed that there was no congress in my local government and they scheduled a repeat of that congress. So I believe, you know, that um, every case should be treated on its own merit. But what I am trying to say is that across the country, in majority of states, the exercise was quite commendable. And uh, as Democrats, we must also instill some measure of uh, confidence in the democratic system across uh, the country. Because, of course, if people lose confidence in the democracy, what else do we have? And I tell you, and I'm being very honest with you, that the space has been so open that people are now more eager to participate and people are more interested in participating. And, and of course, where you get that kind of, uh, the evidence of that kind of eagerness and that kind of mass participation is at the local level. And that's well, why this, this when he said true. all politics is local, I agree with him. So you know, uh, uh, the world congress, congresses that were held were by and large, to a large extent, successful except for one or two hitches. Okay. Uh, and his own may uh, be Mr. Sajjo, uh, uh, pardon me, if I could quickly follow up on another issue that was raised, and, and I, I need to clear this up because it comes up uh, time and again, and it's, it's a talk about former this, former that. And uh, a lot of people from the APC have come on this platform referencing the activities of certain individuals, and they always say former this, former that. And they say that these people make moves to scuttle the democratic process, internal democratic process of the party. And they always look to the national leadership, uh, asking, 
uh, can't you do something about this? So, I mean, you've said you want to speak on, on a wide scale, and, and I'm sure this question is quite fitting. Uh, will the national leadership really uh, hold back when it comes to uh, sanctioning some of these uh, big names? I mean, you can't take that away from any party. There are certain individuals that are big based on p perhaps a position they've held in the past or, or the influence they hold on the party. Do you think the, 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 the national leadership will hold back in sanctioning them if there is a need to do that? Well, well first, first, let's look at it from uh, a purely legal point of view. You know, when the Constitution says there's a possibility that decisions could be reached by consensus, it did not mention those that will sit and hold the consensus. But we all know that, you know, there are certain individuals within the party that could sit together and, and agree on a consensus and present it before the delegates and then you, you end up getting affirmation. It's not like everybody in the state or every member sits down to couple up uh, this consensus. It's not even the delegate that sits to couple the consensus. That's one. Two, there are also, within the constitution of the party, there are those that are called statutory delegates. Those statutory delegates are delegates by law based on the positions they held in the past. You cannot wish these people away within the party system. We have already entrenched it in the law. We have, we have respected their positions in the law. And so we must continue to respect their positions in the law until we change the law or, 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 or treat it otherwise. So this set of people who are statutory delegates by law, if you say you, would know, you cannot bar them from participating in the process. But I, I, I want to join you in one thing. I agree with you absolutely that the national caretaker leadership must demonstrate leadership capacity to the point of being fair and just in cases where the big names have, be, have been found culpable in the process of subverting the democratic process. And, 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 and that is where we, we are all appealing. You are appealing, I am appealing, every right-thinking citizen, whether a member of the party or outside the party, must begin to appeal to the leadership of this country at all levels, not just the party, to hold big names, quote and unquote, you know, culpable where they, they contravene the law, to, to sanction them where there is a necessity to sanction them. And I, I think the, the Mai Mala Buni uh, led committee should do that and may definitely do that since they have already made a commitment that whoever is found culpable will be sanctioned. Well, it, it, one other issue that, that this raises in my mind, Mr. Sajo, is the fact that it would seem like, as I asked uh, Mr. Anwoye the other time, concerns of many people who were unhappy with the state of things in their states and at their wards were not addressed before these congresses. And perhaps that's the reason for all of the rockers and the rancorous congresses that I've held so far. You may say, I mean, it's uh, not... It's not parallel Congress per se, but it only raises more questions and more questions all over the place. So in addressing these issues, Mr. Sajo, what would you say should have been considered before this? And I want to believe that it's, it's not too late. The, the question is actually for Mr. Sajo. I want to believe that it's not too late to address those issues. So those issues that raise questions on the minds of those who decided we're going to have our own parallel Congresses, they were not addressed. Otherwise, would we have this kind of situation that we have on our hands now all over the country? No, I, I, I think I wouldn't want to agree with you on, on the fact that they were not addressed. Probably they were not addressed to the satisfaction of the people that raised them. But again, you know, when, when you bring concerns regarding contravention of the law or contravention of procedure or, or uh, things that are done not according to the laid down rules. You know, it, it, it does not automatically, you know, uh, confer the right on you. Uh, you know, the right to disagree is a right. But that, your disagreement cannot always also be right. So the, 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 the committee is, uh, is is duty bound or was duty bound at, at any point in time to make sure that they go by 
the evidence that was presented before them, where they did not act on clear-cut evidence that things had gone wrong, definitely those uh, inactions may have led to further disagreement with the process. That cannot be ruled out. But by and large, essentially, most times, even when decisions are taken, even in courts of law, people disagree. That's why several appellate levels are there. If to say we had an, uh, a room for appeal or a window for appeal after the Supreme Court, people would still appeal after the Supreme Court had given judgment. So uh, uh, the appellate uh, system presupposes that some people will disagree with the judgment that will be carried out. But that does not mean that judgment was not carried out. That does not mean that disputes were not handled you know, uh, carefully by those that are supposed to handle the dispute. So disagreements are a right, you know, but uh, they do not automatically become right. That's the situation. Uh, interesting way you put that, uh, Mr. Sajjo. But, you know, a lot of Nigerians are watching clearly and they're seeing uh, the way political parties are conducting themselves because this is some sort of dress rehearsals for what we ha will have. I mean, we have an Anambra coming up and, of course, 2023 elections. But let me take this to uh, Dr. Nguye. I imagine that you also want to respond to uh, the national leadership and, and the talk around sanctioning the former this, former that. If you, you think that the national leadership will hold back. You did say that uh, they are afraid of, of these names. But uh, let me come to your particular uh, experience now, because, I mean, politics is local. And um, you reference what happened, what has happened in the past and what played out over the weekend. So I'd like to know, what gives legitimacy to a Congress, a state Congress? Is it the location, the venue that was used, which was which has been approved, uh, as you referenced, or the presence, the participation of the team, uh, the committee that has been sent from the national level. Because in your case, I mean, you held on to the, the venue, and it would seem another team held on to the committee that was sent uh, from the leadership in Abuja. So what gives legitimacy, as it were, to the Congress? Process. So legitimacy is judged from the moment it starts. At that moment, goes from the cells of form to the Congress itself. So in this case, you have, you have a Congress that is going on, but by, it started with cells of form. A member, a member of the Kiatika, uh, National Kiatika Committee hijacked the cells of form and took the forms to the zona office, southeast zona office. That's a violation with a specific instruction not to sell the form at the state party secretariat, where the forms are supposed to be sold. And then we are now required, the legitimate people who want to contest are now required to go to Abuja to pick up forms. That's placing a higher burden on the real people. Then the second phase is, the actual screening of those who want to participate. No screening was done in any room. No screening committee arrived until a night, a day before the Congress. Screening supposed to be done and completed on the 14th. Then on 15th, it was announced that they'll be going, they'll be holding screening at night time at not at the uh, zona office. These are against the party's own guideline. And then once again, the party is maintaining willful blindness on violation of its own guidelines. People went to be screened and no screening committee was there. With unnaming them, the same committee had been accused of impropriety that came to conduct the Congress that did the other two Congress are the one claiming to be the one to do the screening. Wow. Right. And yet, after hours, no screening was done. So if you okay. switch it forward, yeah, so it's um, the stages. Okay, Mr. Moye, let, let me just ask you this, because, I mean, uh, we're winding down now for, for this segment. So when these things happen, what's the thinking? Does it automatically confer popularity when they do these things because that will count when the chips are down, when your party needs to go and vie for votes with Nigerians and how is this going to affect things moving forward? 
That is my concern. I've, I have done all I could to build APC in Enugu State. This is a party that was not acceptable in 2013 when we started. People were called Boko Haram. People were called all sorts of names. This former, this and former that were in the other party. They were former, they were governors and speakers in the other parties. They were leaders in the other party. As soon as President Buhari won and we took over power, they came in with their statues. And my concern is that, are they going to be able to gather vote? We raised this party under my leadership from barely 20,000 members to now one, over 180,000 members. These people they are listening to in Abuja, they don't have followership in our party. So the, the grassroots members, the true grassroots members, must be allowed to elect their own members, their own leaders. But those who are thinking about 2023, those who are in PDP, I want to I want to contest for governor in mm. APC, and how to fund the money to fund factionalization are hijacking the process. And so okay, they are crying out. Yeah. Earlier, my apologies. Earlier, you because as, as Jim said, we're winding now. Earlier, you said that some powerful elements had some motives. In your opinion, what could these motives be? The motive is to kill APC in a new state and confer certain advantage to certain people. They are not working for APC. And then we are saying this thing because it's a fact. We have evidence of this fact, but no one is listening. It is well, way, it, it, it's strange. It, it's strange that you say that they want to kill a party that they belong to. I, I'm trying to wrap my head around it. Why would they want to kill the party to which they are members? Because you hear the story that some of these people are APC in Abuja and BDP in their local state. In the Enugu state, they are BDP in the Enugu state. And they are only APC in Abuja. But they won't listen to us. We are not former this, we are not former that. And listen, I'm a lawyer. Okay, and, and I'm, what I'm telling you is I'm not impugning anybody's reputation. I, I'm not maligning anybody. We have facts, we have evidence. You must discuss within a context. Please ask the former governor of Enugu State. Did he attend the last Congress, state Congress? They locked him out. Ask the former Gombe state governor, who, who is also a candidate. Did he attend? Was he at the venue? They shot him out of the system. These are big names too. These are former this and these are former that. They shot well, well. <laughs> ask the Sami the Sami SSA to the president on justice reform. They shot her out of the process. Well, Mr. Oye, you, 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 now you're a former chairman. You say you're a former, you're not former, this is a former that on the lighter note you are now. <laughs> so you may you may fall into that category someday. You never can tell. Don't throw stones on your glass house. <laughs> But Mr. Sajo, uh, having listened to all of those that uh, uh, he, he's complained about now, these are concerns that he's, you can see that, that are really bugging the minds of himself and several others who reckon. But if these things are not handled properly, it will have huge implications for your convention coming forward. In fact, how is Oshun State going to play out now? Because several calls have come through that they had to postpone it. They didn't hold it. Everybody wants to claim uh, to be the party leader. In fact, they also referenced what he spoke about, former days and current that, wanting to lay claim to being party leader. So your party has got its job cut out for it, don't you think? Yeah, let me, let me even add to your political lexicon. You know, in every state, there are Abuja politicians and uh, local politicians, you know, homegrown politicians. It's always there in every state in, in, in this country. I, I, I think going forward, the Senator Abdullahi Adamu Reconciliation Committee has a huge task on its hands. And uh, my Mala Bunis, uh, attitude or, 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 or method of reconciling people that had uh, reconciled the interests within the party since he took over must be brought to bear immensely on, on the system before the, the convention is held. Uh, happily, there is uh, a little window uh, that there will be some zonal uh, elections before the national convention. Uh, they may be, they may, they may, they may not be very contentious like the state elections, but they are also going to provi provide room 
for a lot of uh, understanding and reconciliation in between this one and the National Convention. I, I, I believe and, 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 and I'm positive that um, before the, the convention, uh, some of these issues will be addressed. But let me also appeal to the elders and the very senior members of the party, the former this and former that to which my brother, Dr. Mwoye, now belongs to, that um, they must demonstrate leadership. Being former this, former that, being statutory delegate means that they have some leadership responsibility conferred on them. They must demonstrate that leadership by being uh, a little bit more flexible, a little bit more amenable to understanding uh, situations and give, you know, the give and take that is required to build a more cohesive party. Otherwise, yeah, we will, we will, we Mr. will Sajo, not have just uh, briefly, a very We have to go, but just briefly, that, that statutory delegateship which you just spoke about now, how relevant is it in the scheme of things, given the direct primary position of the Electoral Act which has been amended? Well, you see, the, the, the act has been amended at the National Assembly. Uh, my brother Chamberlain, we should not uh, hurry the process. Until the act is concurrently amended in the both chambers of the National Assembly, and then a clean copy presented by the clerk to the president, and the president assents okay. to it, is still not the law. So All right. we, we await that process before we, we, we begin to talk about it. All I right, think then. we do not cross a bridge before reaching it. All right, we, we need to go at this point. Uh, Mr. Ahmed Sajo, former Commissioner for Information, Adam Al State, as well as uh, Dr. Ben Moye, who is oh. a former. So, so I'm chairman. former too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I didn't, I mean, that, Thank you that's much. what it is with everyone this morning. <laughs> so that's why I say don't throw stones on your glasses, you never can tell. Well, uh, Dr. Moye, thank you for your perspective as well today on the program. Uh, yeah, I mean, you heard them. They ended with that optimism. They always do, don't they? We'll be back in just a moment. We'll go to a similar matter. Well, you'll find out in just a moment. Stay with us. You can see that it's a transparent process, it's a credible process, and uh, over time we have developed a spirit of consensus, both at the state level and even at the national level. I believe these are the basis where we expect that Nigerians can now have confidence in the PDP and vote back the PDP into power. Well, at the national level, you should also expect a credible and transparent process like this one. Uh, of course, because the national level is, is larger, is uh, more complex, you may find a little bit of you know, competition. But here, we have been able to uh, see that we have come to a consensus in virtually all the positions. We are in the opposition, and so we remain united and work hard to see that the bad leadership of APC is removed in Nigeria and will replace it so that Nigerians will continue to enjoy the good leadership for which they were known for, particularly our youths, uh, for both human and capital development in Nigeria and in other states. I congratulate the executives that we have just elected today. It is historical. This is the first time that we are coming for an elective congress and the situation is carnival-like. They should watch out. PDP will unite Nigeria. PDP belongs to all of us. They must come back and get integrated into the fold. Congress was very, very peaceful. Only we got to know from some people outside, from the security agents, there are some woodlocks who are planning to disturb this Congress. But good enough, 
the Congress is ongoing. We are not, don't believe somebody can disturb us. And we believe we are going to get to the end of the matter. Actually, we have not seen anything bad in the conciliation because we disagree to agree, we agree to disagree, which is normal. You understand? We don't mind. If that will be the uh, probably will be the resolution of the party, it's welcome. Welcome back. Well, yes, uh, those gentlemen will be speaking to the PDP congresses that are held across the country. Well, they equally have some challenges, which uh, they'll speak about. Mr. Sala is on uh, the did vie for the chairmanship position for the PDP in Ebony State. He joins us via, he joins us virtually. And then we've got uh, uh, Sunny Omar, who himself is a former uh, PDP campaign spokesperson. Gentlemen, good morning. Thank you for joining us on the program today. Uh, good morning, Chamberlain, and good morning, Makindi. Yeah, and uh, Kaidi, as well, you forget that. All right, uh, Mr. Ono, let me start okay. with you. You uh, vied, yeah, you, you vied for the chairmanship position in the States, and um, it didn't go well for you. You didn't win, uh, basically. So could you tell us? What transpired? I, I won, actually. <laughs> I won. You did? Uh, but it wasn't your name that uh, the party announced? Well, that was an illegal declaration. Um, an election is not an event. It's a process. And you have to run it down from the beginning to the end. It begins with uh, nomination. And all of that must be done in accordance with the party's guideline and constitution. When nomination opened, I was the only person who purchased form, the chairman. All yeah, but. Waiting for pre -form. I don't know where and how people get pre from for a party that so has advertised. So are you. Sorry, just to say that straight, because what was said is that. Um, the Congress committee, according to the results announced by the chairman of Bonny State PDP Congress committee, Chief Ben Collins, Okoria polled 1,200 votes to defeat his rival, Salas Ono, who polled 200 votes. And, uh, there are other reports that will say I put 260 votes. So you see that there's an allocation of votes. So how from many the votes processes, did you get? The election never happened. How many votes did you there get? No, there was no election. So how did you say you won? There was no election. No, I won because I was the only candidate in the election. I did not expect that I would even have an open election. It was an unopposed election. You cannot put somebody's name on the ballot who was not even qualified to be screened. Now, I was trying to give you a foundation. I was the only one who got from submitted within time. The closing date for submission of form was October 1st. I submitted to the court that screening was October 9th. It was at the screening venue that I saw many people filling forms that they are aspirants. You don't fill form on the date of screening that you're aspiring for election, and then you get screened and cleared. I wrote a complaint to the appeals committee that these people are not even qualified to be screened talk more of uh, participating in an election. That was never addressed. It was ignored. The same people who conducted the screening exercise turned up as the people who now conduct Congress. On the date of the Congress, they showed up. Before they arrived, the Capital Committee Chairman has started delegate tax to everybody who cared to collect. When they showed up, they just started voting. There was no accreditation. 
there was nothing. They didn't even mention the name of those who are going to contest because it would be at that point that I would also inform them and remind them of my complaint about the screening of people who never submitted nomination form on the day of screening. The documents are all there to show. How are you certain? So they just they just quickly. Uh, Mr. Honor, if, if I could quickly come in, uh, we'll, we'll resolve that, that whole connection issue. But how are you certain that you're the only one that purchased the form? I, I imagine you don't at least, uh, you don't sleep at the party secretariat, or, or you're not always there, and you don't have a list. I, I, perhaps you do, but how are you certain that you're the only one that purchased the form just before the deadline? It's not true. It's not true. It's not uh, a Mr. Honor, can you hear me? Uh, activity. It's an open activity. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, there seems to be some interference in your audio, you, but yes. please go ahead. It's not a secret activity, the purchase and submission of form. It's a public uh, record. The record is there. If anyone claims that he bought form, you will need to show the, the purchase of form is uh, via payment uh, in Bangor. You need to show that. And submission is also, there's a register of submission. This is something I witnessed with my eyes on the day of screening, they were all filling their forms. The committee that came from Abuja, the same committee that did the screening and election, only came there with my form. It was my form only that they came with. It was my form only that they came with. Okay, uh, we'll, yeah. we'll come back to you, Mr. Honor, but let's take this to Mr. Omar. Uh, and, and, and get his, uh, his perspective as well. So, uh, Mr. Omar, Mr. Onu, on the one hand, thinks, says he's the chairman of um, a Boeing State PDP. And then he also says that the process uh, was fraught with a lot of irregularities, essentially also saying that the process did not hold. So, I mean, those are his opinions. And, I mean, the PDP had seven states to conduct this Congress, or your Ebonyi, Kwara, Lagos, Adamar, Bornu, Kebi. And we've seen that, you know, your... Ebonyi and, and some other states, there have been issues. Uh, from where you sit, uh, from you, your own experience, perhaps it's different. What can you tell us? Well, uh, there is no smooth Congress anywhere. Uh, all Congresses normally come up with some of their you know, diverg divergent issues, and uh, I think his own case is an isolated case. Nevertheless, when it comes to Congress, party Congresses, uh, it is not only uh, the, it starts from the expression of interest. Once you express interest, you buy the nomination forms, you fill the nomination forms, you are screened, and then uh, the, the Congress committee comes to conduct the election. After the election, we have the appeal committee. The appeal committee will now listen to the appeals. And if all the allegations is leveling against the Congress is found to be you know, true, the election will be upturned, and then there will be another uh, Congress. Uh, in the alternative, if the appeal committee does not find anything, they will communicate to him in writing and say that his allegations are baseless, they are, not, they are unfounded, and that uh, they cannot find anything to substantiate his claims. And so they submit their report to the National Working Committee, who will now sit down and then ratify the, 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 the report. And then whatever comes out from the National Working Committee becomes uh, the, the working document of the party. And so the person so declared, if the National Working Committee clears him, then he becomes the chairman. So I think he has not exhausted all the processes. He is only talking about the Congress. He has not told us what the appeal committee has said about his... Uh, if, if he has appealed or what the appeal committee has said about his appeal and whether the, 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 the report of the com appeal committee has been endorsed by the National Working Committee. So these are the processes that uh, ought to have been followed. So I'm not uh, disputing whether he was cheated or he was not cheated, but whether all these processes have been exhausted. Well, a, a, a quick response to something that he said, uh, Mr. Omar, uh, the fact that... Um some of the candidates came only on the day of screening. Is that also part of the process? Well, I, 
You see, when, when uh, an issue is coming up like this, uh, you are only hearing from one part of the party concerned. We have not heard from the party itself, and we have not heard from the other party concerned. And like uh, Kayode actually you know, reasoned, uh, he may not have known when other people will go and buy their forms and fill it, you know? And once you pay for the forms, even if you don't fill it before time, the party gives grace for you to fill the forms and submit, so, and for you to be screened. So you cannot just come on the day of the election and be filling form. You have to be screened. And the, the screen, this, uh, the, those screened, their names will be pasted. And everybody will see that these are the people who have passed the screening. And uh, so if, if this process is uh, negated, our constitution says that that process completely is negatory. So it, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, uh, carry weight. He can, he can approach the court. You know, and for the collection to be annulled. Mm. So but just for just to, to be clear that uh, yeah. uh, just just to be clear for a lot of Nigerians that have I mean followed the process because I mean they're looking at what the political parties are doing at this time. Is, is this a normal process? I mean, some of these issues that have been raised. Is this all normal to you as 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 a politician? Because I mean. These things happen time and again at the local government, at the ward level, at the state level. And it comes across as though, I mean, for politicians, I mean, active players in political party affairs, this is not a big deal. This is normal democracy, internal party democracy. Just to be clear, is all of this normal? Well, I'm not going to really say whether it is normal or abnormal. But what I will say is that the mechanism, the internal mechanism for uh, elections within political parties is not as strong, as, as virile, and as vibrant as that of INEC. INEC is there, for instance, to conduct elections. And so they, they have processes for you to follow. But in the political party, the, 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 the guidelines, only issues being issued says, it, it, it is either direct or indirect primaries. So if it is direct primaries, this is how it will be done. If it is indirect primaries, this is how it is going to be done. And it does not even give room or allowance for say, this is, if it is not done this way, it cannot be accepted. So whichever, the, the whole power relies on the person presiding, that is the presiding officer at that time, or the person returning the results. He, will, he does everything and then returns it, and he is believed. No, because he is considered to be the, the independent person among the, uh, this, whether he does it right or wrong, uh, you know, there is no any, you know, ways, you know, viral ways to verify that he actually didn't do it well or he actually did it well. So the party ends up accepting such results. So what I'm saying is it is not a normal process, but it is not also abnormal because it happens. Uh, it's funny that after that, I mean, after you answering that question, I've not gotten closure. I'm not sure whether it's normal or abnormal. Yes, you're clearly staying in the <laughs> middle. Uh, but let me take this back to Mr. Onu. <laughs> I mean, for, sure he for, doesn't think it's normal. <laughs> honestly, because uh, for us internalizing this, we, we wonder, I mean, this doesn't look normal. Uh, so, Mr. Onu, I mean, you've referenced what you had to go through. I mean, Mr. Omar thinks that you, you have not also uh, talked about some of the, uh, the outcome of the appeal and all of that. But, but one always wonders that what is the end game here? I mean, if you had a process which you say was fraught with irregularities, people registering on the day of, uh, of, of screening, and, and some other issues. One wonders, uh, what is the end game here? Is this a case of former this, uh, former that, yet again? Well, uh, that is part of it, but I, I won't talk about that uh, here now, uh, because, like he said, I couldn't agree more with uh, what he said. Uh, there are processes uh, in the party. And like I said earlier, that uh, after the screening, I submitted an appeal protesting the screening of people who were filling their forms in the venue of screening. I was not attended to, it was totally not. I was proceeded to Congress with that hanging. Now the, uh, the Congress uh, appeal committee will sit on Wednesday and they will get my complaint. 
before the city. And I will expect that they will do justice. Now, I said I'm the winner because I am supposed to be the only person on that day standing election. No other person but from. I repeat, and if anyone but from, let the person show it. It is that easy. If I write my complaint, let the person go and show his receipts and everything, and the date the person submitted the form. The guideline of a party is a decision of the National Executive Committee. The National Working Committee cannot override it. They cannot even purport to override it. The guideline says that you should buy form. The National Working Committee cannot give to you a form. It's not possible. And I'm aware that form was gifted to this person that was finally declared. So everything was changed from the beginning. And the result was just declared. There was, there was no election. If, well, just if, to say that, um, me, election, pardon me, there will be no contest. Yeah, just to put this in, we actually did reach out to the other side, and then, as you can see, they did not make the show. Uh, we thought that uh, they were, they, we thought they uh, were interested in it, but as you can see, they just uh, couldn't make it. So, Mr. Ono, is it that you were declared uh, unopposed? <laughs> you were told that you were going to be the only one vying for that position, how did you come to that conclusion that no, you were the only no. one? Because, I mean, uh, Mr. Sani did say you may not have known when the other person bought the forms. Like I said, this thing is a public, uh, uh, it's not a secret uh, event. If there are places you go to to buy from, there is somebody, a dex officer, and there are people in these offices who know who purchase and who do not purchase. And when it becomes an issue that will be tendered as evidence, I would expect anyone who says he, but from he also show their tellers and uh, bank draft. So it's not an issue of uh, how do you know, how are you sure, how were you told that you will return. Nobody will tell me that, nobody told me that. The committee came and they confirmed it was just my name that was given to them from Abuja. But they must also claim those who are already here with their forms for screening. Hmm. All right. Well, uh, Mr. So, uh, let me let me ask uh, Mr. Um, Sonny. This, as you said earlier, is just an example, isolated case, as you put it. it could be, but then there are those who would also have um, issues with whether or not this is an example of some disgruntlement within the party, some, uh, uh, some things that people are not happy about, which is resulted in this and a number of others that you saw in the report that we played before this conversation began. How, in, how then would you say, what would you say to those who feel maybe there are some issues within the party that needed to have been addressed before these congresses? I don't think anywhere in Nigeria, except of course, uh, President Goodluck Jonathan, who considered defeat without any uh, protestations. Uh, most uh, Nigerians, when they contest election, there must be protest. Uh, either we, if we, I, I, the, the loser must always say he was rigged, he was uh, cheated, he was this, he was that. Sometimes those complaints are genuine. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the complaints are frivolous. However, if the, the complaints are genuine, I expect the National Working Committee to go by the rules set out in the guidelines for the conduct of that type of election. Mm -hmm. Now, it is not good, you know, when you have internal working, uh, internal mechanism of conflict resolution, for you to allow people to go to court, to go and challenge certain decisions. These are the norms within political parties because the political parties most times will not agree because they are towing the interest line of a certain particular group or block or in interest. And so they will not want to listen to a genuine complaint that somebody has, unless the person goes to court, and when he goes to court and he wins, then it becomes a problem. Then they will now begin to say, you have no right to go to court because you are a party member. It is part of our laws not to, for you to go to court. But it is also part of the laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria that if you are aggrieved, you can go to court. So the party laws cannot super, 
supersede national law, the, the, the law of the, the, the country. So most times you begin to have uh, issues with the party. So I think the, the need for us to re-examine our uh, uh, internal democracy is very important. So that even if we have external people coming to conduct the election, maybe INEC will be, instead of monitoring, can conduct the election internally and then conduct the election externally. I think it will give it more credibility. But within, within the, in, the, the internal mechanisms used, you know, if a, a particular set of executives are interested in somebody, it is those executives that will tell the guide the, the Congress committee that will come. And so the Congress committee will work with those executives to install the person that is coming for that, uh, to, that they want to win that, that election. So naturally, it now elicits a lot of problems, a lot of complaints. Uh, this is re the reason why we believe, you know, within our party, that even with the indirect primaries, we are having problems. How much more of the direct primaries that the National Assembly is proposing that it should uh, uh, be implemented by all political parties? So you're suggesting that the political parties by themselves are not entirely capable of handling those, uh, the internal democracy, without huge rancor or INEC coming in to help out. Because you say if INEC does come in and set, sort certain things out, perhaps only then will it be acceptable. I mean, this is something that... Uh, uh, has been said not just once by your party, even other parties have suggested the same thing. So why do you think this is the problem with political parties here? But, yeah, the reason is because, uh, for, uh, let me take for example, some political parties tell you that the, the leader of the party in a particular state is the governor. And so if you are not in the book, good books of the governor, and maybe you are a senator, or you are a member of the uh, House of Reps or member of the State Assembly and you want to go back, you cannot go back because the results will be skewed towards his own interest, those he wants. Now, there is a guideline that says this is how the election should be conducted. But again, they will tell you that they will only receive anything coming from the governor. So, political parties sometimes are confused. They don't know. I just heard, for instance, APC saying this morning that any, any, all the parallel congresses that they are holding, they will only take the ones that come from the governor, who is the leader of the party. And if there is no governor, the, the highest political office holder is the leader of the party. So now what happens to the guidelines of the election? What happens to the Congress committee sent to conduct the election? Uh, the, the confusion is so huge. Now take for instance, there, is, there was a Congress in Imo. Rochas Okorocha is the leader of the party because he was the governor at, the at that time. But it was not his candidate that won the election because that principle was not followed. And not, uh, uh, Hope, Hope Uzo Dinamwa was the one who was returned. And the candidate of Rochas complained and complained. Now, if we take this into consideration, how now do you think that political parties are capable of conducting primaries? It is always skewed. So unless you know, certain parameters are put in place or certain conditions are put in place that will compel them to do the right thing, it will always be towards the particular interest of the person in charge. So will the direct primaries solve this problem? The direct primaries would even worsen it. The direct primaries is good, but it is not... Uh, it is rancorous. It is problematic. You know, I, I witnessed a lot of direct primaries, you know, and I, I discovered there was the first counting. The person who was counted first had over 960 votes. And then the second person who came had only about 350 or 60 people on the queue. But because he was the one that was wanted, they allowed the people to go out after they have been counted and come back again and join the queue and come back and join the queue until they were able to reach 1,000 plus. And they were protected by the thugs around there. So how do you really 
you really account for you know the direct primaries. And All right, Mr. Sonny, you know, you, in, you, in, you began the other time. Uh, my my sister, apologies. You began the other time by not telling us whether or not what is normal or not normal. So what should be normal uh, is one the question I want you to answer now because you have uh, referenced the idea that you know a, a, the governor of a state should be the party leader and then you've also given us examples of situations where that didn't happen. So whether or not one thing at the, or the other that ha happening in Ebony, for instance, is not normal, what, in your opinion, should be normal? Otherwise, we will not attract people who can be interested in doing better for Nigeria to any of the political parties. Yeah. What is normal is, number one, that once you buy the prescribed forms and you fill them and you are screened, and you are f found to be competent, then you should be allowed to contest based on the approved guidelines by the party. If the approved guidelines should bring in people with impeccable character who will do the right thing and not to follow any particular interest or directive you know, given to them. Because before the election, the election is won even before the election. Somebody, the governor will say, in this position, I want this man. In this position, I want this man. In this position. So it starts even from the screening. All other candidates can be screened out. And the only person who will be remaining will be the only, that person alone. If they, they discover that the, the other people are very uh, capable and they could defeat him. And if they discover that that person is, in, those people are incapable of defeating him, then they will, they will allow him to go in and then give him a lot of money and say, okay, do this. Just buy the delegates or buy the, the crowd and then so it really doesn't give, bring out the true picture of who is the, peop, one, the one that the party truly loves and who is the one that can deliver that particular seat to the party. I so how that following the guidelines of the party right. and doing the right thing and removing interference is the correct thing and proper thing to do. Mm. Well, I wonder uh, how the, the, some of the uh, suggestions you, you brought up about INEC being involved, I mean, you're against direct primaries. I wonder how some of them will sit with uh, Mr. Ono, having gone through this whole process and with his experience. But as we wind down now, Mr. Ono, I imagine that you have a lot of options ahead of you, I mean, that you're, that you're considering. Perhaps you've even uh, engaged some of them or initiated some of them already. But are you confident in the party leadership? I mean, we're not exactly sure where that will swing now, but are you confident in the structure which your party has right now to ensure that justice is uh, may not swing your way, may swing your way, but essentially that proper justice and the party procedures are followed to the letter and entrenched? Well, uh, first of all, I'd like to say that uh, all that you said are correct and true and a reflection of my experience. Uh, so, regarding your question, then I will say that uh, there are internal mechanisms, like I mentioned earlier, which must procedurally be exhausted, which I'm going to engage. By, uh, today, by end of day today, they will receive my complaint, uh, which I intend to submit at the National Secretariat. And then I hope that uh, the appeal committee, if they are not also teleguided, will do the right thing. Because all of this is about teleguiding. The same man who did, the same committee who did screening that I complained about is the same committee that came to conduct the Congress, the same person that you have complained about. You know, so a lot was done about the complaint. So when you look at all of this, you should see that it was a pre planned arrangement. I wasn't surprised, I expected it. I expected it because an election, a lot would be going on. At the same time, you know what was happening. All right. uh, but I had to be there to see what they were doing to be sure that uh, truly declared someone who didn't buy from until the election. I needed to be sure, and that was what happened. All right. Mr. So, no, uh, I guess this people? is, um, yeah, pa pardon me, we, we need to uh, uh, anchor at that point. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm sure many would have heard your perspective on what transpired, and then 
We'll keep uh, trying to get uh, other perspective as well. But we have to thank you both for coming on this morning. Silas Honor uh, from uh, Eboi Vice for that chairmanship seat, which is as he won, but he's still going to the appeal committee. And then uh, uh, Mr. Sani Omar, spokesperson, former spokesperson of the PDP Presidential Campaign Council. Gentlemen, thank you for coming on this morning. All right, we do have some messages coming through from you. And this one is talking about that... Uh, over five point something billion about monitoring WhatsApp. Well, actually, it's uh, from Tengu Nomishan. Hope I got that right. He says about WhatsApp monitoring. Instead of spending the 5.8 billion naira simply to monitor WhatsApp, isn't it better to invest the money in a technology that helps build a home based social media platform? that will guarantee Nigeria billions of dollars in revenue every year, he asks. Oh, take a look at this one from Paul Agbolade on food security. This will interest you. Ooh. Saying our National Youth wow. Service Corps resources, as NYC, have the potential to produce more than enough poultry and fishery foods if the management of NYC can redirect their community development program along this line. I believe there's one already that concerns farming, I guess. Goes on to say, every local government can sponsor clusters of interested core member poultry and fishery farmers with the aim of providing eggs, chicken, and fish for her immediate and remote community. Some of the core members will also involve or be involved in adding value to this project through processing and wider distribution of the output's profitability. This project has the potential to reduce unemployment rate and return our people to eating and living well. The only thing that will make this project not beneficial is corruption and financial indiscipline uh, of the coordinator. I imagine would all core members be willing to want to go into farming? I recall the teaching controversy as well. <laughs> so is this something similar? And less conversation, trust me. How many students want to study agriculture? Well, this party congress and democracy, Henry Awunano is talking about, says, I don't agree that we should continue suffering bad behavior and outright criminality on the altar of being politically correct. Nigerian politicians are becoming worse by the day. Expose evil, call it by its name, and suffer persecution for righteousness' sake. Everybody will sit up. Nigeria must get it right with leadership selection by 2023. Else, dot, dot, dot. Well, the law is the law. Whatever you want to do, you have to do with the confines of the law so you don't forget that. Or else, you will just become what a lawless. I thought you say society. else, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> so, there you go. And then this one is from Lewis, uh, Reverend Lewis of Olabi on party congress and democracy. Power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. This is what took place during the party's congresses over the weekend. Those in absolute power want to entrench their leadership while those outside want to get in. But those in power will not have that, which is the reason you see the threat of punishment against those who hold parallel congresses. But in this power game, the poor party members will be the eventual loser because the power brokers will always have a way of, quote, settling themselves, he says. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, well, that's how far we have to go. That's quite uh, in interesting. Oh, yes. Other yeah. ones here. Yeah. Yeah. Face to Felix, uh, Adini, Paul, Prof. so many others. Yeah, so there you go. Well, thank you all. We always appreciate your messages. So we don't mind if you just keep them coming through. But that is the show today. We thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time. I'm Chamberlain. So. Well, it's the start of a new week. Please make it a fruitful one. I'm Kaido Kikilu. And I'm Ayo Makinde. Have a wonderful day.